Welcome back to another Student Zone session at Build 2020. Before we get started in the session, uh, it's my duty to remind you of Microsoft's Code of Conduct for Build 2020. Basically, it says, please be kind. We're all here to find communities, friends, be friendly, be kind, be encouraging. Let's all just learn together. I am so excited because I get to do a session with the one and only Francesca, and I want her to introduce herself first. Francesca? Hi, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Francesca. Thank you all for joining our session, Azure Machine Learning in Action. Uh, I'm Francesca. Uh, I'm a Cloud Advocate Lead at Microsoft, and uh, I started my career at Microsoft as a data scientist a few years ago. So in this uh, session, I'm going to represent the role of a data scientist who will help Sarah build an end-to-end -end machine learning solution using uh, Azure Machine Learning. And so, Sarah, why you don't introduce yourself. Thanks, Francesca. Uh, my name is Sarah Guthels, and I have been at Microsoft for just over a year. My passions lie in teaching folks that step zero or step one or maybe one through two or something like that um, on new technologies, new languages, etc. And I've been learning a bit of machine learning with Francesca, and it's been really exciting. During this session, I'm going to be representing the person who has data and they just don't know how to get the answers out of it. And so Francesca and I have been working for many months on a video series that will launch in a few weeks. Um, and this is just a sneak preview as to what you might find in that series. This is our agenda for today. We're gonna go over machine learning algorithms. If you've never heard of them or know about them, we're gonna talk a little bit about those. We're gonna talk a little bit about AutoML, we're gonna talk about Azure Machine Learning, and then I'm gonna show you a quick demo that we've prepared for you. And then don't worry, we'll be, we're gonna go into Q&A. So machine learning algorithms. Francesca shared this amazing graph with me. You can find it at aka.ms slash algorithm cheat sheet. It's a really, really great cheat sheet where basically if you have data and you have a question, you basically just have to ask your question. What do you want to do with that data? What do you want to answer? What do you want to find out? And then you follow all of these lines to figure out how to do it. Now, this cheat sheet's awesome, but it would take me personally hours to kind of go through it and really figure out what I want to do. So we've broken it down for you after many, many uh, team sessions with Francesca. I think I figured out the four main categories. So I'm going to run through them. Francesca, you keep me honest here. We basically yeah. have four categories. We have predicting between categories. We have understanding images and natural language. We have discovering patterns in data and predicting results based on relationships between values. Okay, those kind of like, you know, there's pretty colors and cute boxes. Seems simple. I, words are still complicated to me. So let's go into some examples of these. So predicting between categories. Really, there is two different types of machine learning algorithms you might want to use here. One is two class classification. An example of a question that you might have is I've got a ton of movies and a ton of data on those movies, and I want to answer the question, is this movie that I've chosen a romantic movie or an adventure movie? So I'm just choosing between two categories. A similar cat classification is called multi-class classification basically the same thing. I just want to choose between, is it a romantic, adventure, or musical? So this is where things might get a little bit more complicated because, you know, the difference between a romantic and a musical might not be that far off. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a pretty good movie buff, but really just kind of in the watching, not in the, like, creating of the genres. So another type of machine learning algorithm is discovering patterns in data. And here we've really got three different types of algorithms you might want to use. One is a recommender. And this, an example of this would be, what will customers buy next? So anytime you're shopping online, you might have run into a system that's using a recommender machine learning algorithm in the back end, because based on what you have bought previously, it might try to predict what you're going to buy next and then offer that up to you as an ad. Clustering is another type of this type of algorithm. And an example question here is, how can I segment my customers based on their preferences and run a better advertising strategy? I felt this one hard when I had my daughter. So she's now two and 
I had her and I started buying things related to babies and I definitely got put into this customer segment of mom. And so all of my carts on every single platform were basically like, hey, you're a mom, you probably want mom things. Um, and that might be things related to my baby, that might be things related to giving birth and having and growing children and things like that. Um, it was a little bit overwhelming, but I could see that algorithm in action. Another one is anomaly detection. And this one is an example here is, can I detect equipment anomalies and predict maintenance operations in industrial plants? This one hit home to me because one of my very first internships when I was in college was with a company local to San Diego called Viasat. And you might, not, you might know them because they now provide internet via their satellites onto a lot of airplanes. And my task was to take this enormous Excel sheet that one person who was retiring managed that tracked every single physical component that was returned or marked as defect or anything like that and turn it into a visualization that an upper level management person could see and then they could track this. So I basically was doing this machine learning algorithm but manually and um, it worked but I would have significantly benefited from actually using an anomaly detection algorithm. Another type, another category here is understanding images and natural language. Here you might have image classification. So um, if the, the question here might be, does this image represent a cat or a dog? Seems pretty straightforward enough. Uh, if you've used any of the Azure Cognitive Services with the computer vision or custom vision, you might have run into these types of things. Um, one of my favorites here is comparing a skydiver to a scuba diver because basically it is a human floating in blue. And so these types of algorithms will use other features of the image to identify whether this is someone underwater or someone in the sky. Another type is text analytics. What are our customer feedback and reviews on the quality of our products? And we've done a lot of sessions in the student zone that use this type of machine learning algorithm in the back end. Um, Jim, who is going to be moderating our Q&A for this session, he did a session on Python and cognitive services where it recognized names versus, for example, his name Jim versus a gym that you might work out in. Um, and Instafluff did a session on no code AI that uses the Luis.ai. Um, service and you can catch that session again in about 12 hours if you missed it. And finally, the last section is regression and this is being able to predict results based on relationships between values. And a real world question here is what are the forecasted sales quantity per item per store for the next four weeks? Uh, again, this one would have come in handy when I was an undergrad working at the San Diego Zoo in food service and I was managing that. I had to figure out how much of Diet Coke to order. And if you asked Hanselman, he'd probably just say all of it, um, but that I couldn't do that because I didn't want anything to be thrown away. And so we had to use um, our just human forecasting. For example, on Christmas, we actually would um, purchase more chicken because we found that people who didn't eat beef often came to the zoo on Christmas more often than people who did eat beef. It was just kind of something that we learned over time, but if we had all of this data inside of a machine learning algorithm, we could have done all of that with just a click of a button and I wouldn't have had to spend all those weekends trying to figure that out. So those are the different types of categories of machine learning algorithms. And for this session, really what I have is I am have this data from a bank. And basically this bank is hoping to only call people who might want to have a high interest saving account. And so they have a ton of data from phone calls of customers that they have where they called them and they offered them this service and they have a yes or a no whether this person took the service or not. And what we wanna do is predict whether or not a person will go for this service because if they if it's not likely that they will, I don't wanna waste time calling them, right? I don't wanna waste their time. I don't wanna waste my time. I only wanna target the customers that want this service. And so that's really what we're gonna be dealing with today. But I could just kind of choose one of these algorithms to run and see what happens. Uh, but I hear from Francesca that there's a better way of doing this 
that would enable me to try out a lot of different algorithms all at once and find the best one. So Francesca, first of all, did I do an OK job explaining those algorithms? You did an excellent job and I'm so proud of you, Sarah. Thank you. And, uh, you are right. I think that the cheat sheet that you just showed before, it's a great starting point for data scientists or for developers, student developers who want to get started with the data science and machine learning. However, there is a sort of a trick that we use, data scientists use, uh, in order to try different type of machine learning models at the same time. It is called automated machine learning. So as you can see from the cheat sheet that uh, Sarah shared before and by the way you can find that cheat sheet at aka.ms slash algorithm cheat sheet so if you want to learn more you can also download your own version of that um, so as you can see from this uh, uh, from this slide you have uh, so many different uh, options as a data scientist and really understanding the predictive power of a set of uh, features of uh, different variables so with uh, with respect to a dependent variable meaning the target variable so meaning what we want to predict is a very uh, challenging and tricky problem and uh, there is no universal metric which can tell you exactly what to do uh, and also the answer to the question which algorithm should I use it is a, first of all is a, a very difficult answer and second I received this question so many times and the answer is always it depends it depends on the size but also on the quality and the nature of your data uh, it depends also on what you want to do with your data so this is also very very important and I have yeah, to say it seems that, like when I my example it seems like I'm probably going to want to do like a two class classification like a yes or a no but That's now so that I'm re-looking at this, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's so many different algorithms to choose from. I know, I know. So it's, uh, and you are totally right. So it's uh, uh, really answering that question, what you want to do with your data, as you ask yourself, Sarah, it's perfect because that is going to be like a great first step for you uh, to understand uh, what are the different features, what are the different parameters that eventually you can use in your model. However, uh, there are still many different options uh, in terms of uh, algorithms that you can use. And uh, as you can see from the cheat sheet, uh, Azure Machine Learning has a large library of algorithms from the classification, recommender, uh, recommender systems, but also clustering, anomaly detection, regression, and text analytics. And each is designed to address uh, a different type of machine learning problem. So the answer also to which parameters is another important question. I mentioned parameters multiple times during my presentation. Uh, hyperparameters are very high level um, uh, characteristics that cannot be learned uh, directly from the data. So they describe the structural information about a model that needs to be decided before fitting those model parameters. So just to give you some ideas, uh, um, some of the uh, parameters examples in uh, machine learning are the uh, regularization constant, the number of branches is in a decision tree, also the number of clusters in uh, clustering algorithms that Sarah was uh, uh, sharing before, like uh, k-means. So these are all numbers and all uh, characteristic of the model that you have to decide before even starting to train uh, your model. So as you can see, it's very, very complicated. And of course, there are different strategies that the data scientists use to optimize hyperparameters. I can just mention some of them, such as the Bayesian optimization, the random search, the grid search. But again, it's very time consuming and can be a little bit complicated. That's why Today, I want also to introduce uh, this uh, Azure machine learning capability that is uh, called automated machine learning. So automated machine learning is uh, the process of automating the time consuming iterative task of a machine learning model development and is also very, very helpful for hyperparameter tuning. So for uh, selecting your uh, hyperparameters and also to tune them, so to find the right combination of your parameters. Um, automated machine learning, by the way, was developed by Microsoft Research and then it was uh, incorporated inside uh, in Azure Machine 
machine learning. So that's great because people like me, like Sarah, can now use it. Uh, so just to give you some additional uh, details, uh, with automated machine learning, you just need to identify, first of all, what is the machine learning problem that needs to be solved. It can be like a classification, forecasting or regression, and we learn all these algorithms with Sarah uh, just a few minutes ago. Then you have to specify the, the source and the format of your training data. This is the data that you're going to use in order to make your model to learn. Those algorithms need to learn uh, from a specific data set. And uh, uh, since it is based on a Python, you can be an, you can, it can be like an umpire array or a pandas data frame or any really uh, data set that you want to um, ingest uh, into Azure Machine Learning and so that uh, automated machine learning can read these uh, data. Then you have also to uh, configure a computer target for the model training. This is a standard process. Uh, you can use your local computer, you can use the Azure uh, machine learning computes, also remote uh, virtual machines or Azure database. That it's really up to you and on your uh, data science scenario. And uh, um, during training, the Azure machine learning service uh, creates these uh, number of uh, in parallel pipelines. So these are machine learning pipelines that try different algorithms and parameters for you. So it's really a sort of uh, optimization process for you, and it will stop only once it hits the criteria that you define for the experiment. Like let's say that you want to just automate machine learning to try uh, 10 different uh, uh, machine learning uh, um, algorithms or just to run for 20 different uh, uh, machine learning pipelines, you can decide that. So you have a total control and overview uh, of what automated machine learning is doing for you. But at the same time, instead of uh, running one model at a time, you're running actually 10, 20, even 30 or 50 different uh, machine learning uh, pipelines. So that's great. In order to use uh, automated machine learning, and by the way, we're going to see very, very soon how you can use it in Azure Machine Learning, you can uh, use the AutoML config class. Uh, this class represents a configuration for uh, submitting an automated machine learning experiment in Azure Machine Learning. And uh, this is uh, just a configuration object that really contains and persists uh, the parameters for creating and defining the experiment run, and as, as well also the training data, so the data that you uh, ingest in the uh, machine learning algorithms that are going to be used at the run time. So you can find more at this aka.ms slash automl config class link if you want to learn more how you can use uh, automated machine learning. Awesome. So, yeah. I, like that's, <laughs> I, I love chatting with Francesca about this because she's so knowledgeable and Everything you just said, I, 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 I cued in on one thing. You said you could do this in Azure Machine Learning. Yes. You that can. sounds that sounds easy. Can you can you show me? Yeah. That? <laughs> it's a, you know it's a easy I would say and also very very productive, which is the most important thing. You're right. So Azure Machine Learning. What is Azure Machine Learning? Uh, is a cloud-based uh, environment uh, that uh, you data scientists, developers, students, they, they can use it to train, deploy, automate, but also manage and track different type of machine learning models. So this is the key. Azure Machine Learning can be used for any kind of machine learning uh, from classical machine learning methods, but also to more advanced deep learning uh, methods and also supervised and unsupervised learning. So it's really a, a platform where you can experiment a different type of machine learning models. Uh, uh, the nice things is that you have a different type of authoring tools. So once you get there, you can decide, oh, I prefer to actually write my uh, code to build my machine learning models with notebooks, or I prefer to use automated machine learning, or instead I prefer to use a designer. Designer is the visual interface for Azure Machine Learning Service and really enables you to prep your data, train and test your deployed without writing code. So also that is very, very exciting. And then in terms of assets, you have data sets, experiments, data pipelines. These are again, uh, machine learning uh, processing workflow. Uh, models, of course, these are the models that you're going to create and also deployments. Deployments are very important when you want to 
push your machine learning models into production. These are endpoints of deploy models to consume from an application, from an external system. Finally, in terms of management, you have your compute that I was also mentioning before. This is a way to manage what compute is created and when it's used, which is also important. Data stores, how you can store your data, and finally the workspace. The workspace is really this cloud-based environment uh, that you as a student, as a data scientist, as a developer can use to contain all these amazing features. So awesome. Sarah, let's see actually, let me see actually how it works in Azure Machine Learning. Yeah, yeah. we're going to do a quick demo here. And um, just a reminder, we do have a video series coming out soon, and we're going to show you that with like code and notebooks and VS Code and in the browser, it's going to be it's going to be a lot. And this time I want to show you a no code example. So I'm starting out in my Azure portal here and I've already created the resource, but I wanted to briefly show you how you might do this. All you have to do is head over to create resource. Or you can even search up here and just search machine learning. You can see that I do have it right here on my on on my um, dashboard as well. So you can either search it here, click create resource and search it there. Um, but basically what you want to do is find the machine learning resource and hopefully my um, my portal wants to be responsive. Hello, portal. Wake up. Are you sleeping? Basically, you click on create a resource. You search for machine learning and you follow a two screen prompt with, I think, about five questions, which is basically um, which what do you want to name your machine learning service? Um, here we go. What do you want to name it? Uh, which subscription do you want to put it on? And um, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. So workspace name, which subscription, your resource group, your location, and I chose Enterprise Edition for this one. And you just kind of walk through that and click Create. And once your machine learning resource is created, I'm not going to show you that because it'll show my subscription key, which I don't want to share with you all right now, but I have opened it up over here in this new window. It'll bring you to this new area. This is the machine learn Azure Machine Learning Studio. And I've already updated my data, uploaded my data, excuse me. So I went in here. Oh, hello. I guess we want to sign in today again. Microsoft. How well can you spell Microsoft while live coding? <laughs> OK. Let us sign in. And I'm just going to walk you through this super quickly. Let me make sure that this is properly zoomed for you. OK, so I've already got my data here. I just wanted to show you that it was um, it's here. Uh, it's got some some columns here, age, job, marital, education. And what I'm trying to predict here is this last column right here. Why? Yes or no? Did the folks use my or uh, decide to purchase the service or not? And all I did was I went into auto ML after I uploaded my data and I clicked new auto automated ML run, okay? And I filled out again, I just walked through this as it walked me through it. I said, yes, I want this data set, clicked next, and I walked through it. Now, I'm not going to walk through that now because as you can see, it took 34 minutes for this to run, but I do just wanna call out a couple of things because I did already run this with this data. All I did was walk through that. And one thing that I wanted to call out is that this run has all of the models that it ran. So as Francesca said, you can run five models, 10 models, 50. I mean, look, this is run number 70, okay, and 71. I don't even know how many models this ran. This was just my first time. It ran all of these different models for me. It sorted them by how accurate the model was able to predict whether or not the person signed up for my service. And so I'm going to click on this explanation right here, and I can see that this will load, and it gives me a visualization, maybe, perhaps. Um, basically, what I'll be able to see here is what features, so basically what columns of my data most predicted the outcome, aka did the person sign up or not. And I can see here that the duration of the call, whether or not somebody stayed on for at least five minutes or longer, was almost always predicting whether or not someone purchased the service, which means probably when I go back and run this again, because it's always a good idea to kind of iterate over this, I'm going to probably want to drop that column because if it is so tightly correlated, that's not the interesting information that I'm going to get um, in order to figure out 
whether or not I want to target certain customers with, with other types of services. So the next one looks like uh, whether or not someone is employing people. So that's what this column is. And by the way, this data set is over here, and that's how I know what these columns are, are meaning. And I basically just followed this tutorial, which we'll throw these, these links in the chat for you. Um, so this basically says that uh, if somebody employed a, a mean number of 5.5, 5 employees. This is the feature importance, basically, of how important it is if they employed a certain number of employees, whether or not they would um, uh, likely um, choose this service. And so basically, I know that if someone is employing someone, they're likely to want to choose the service that I'm trying to offer them. And there's a bunch of other visualizations over here. I'll let you walk through the tutorial yourself. Um, and uh, check out all of the different visualizations, all of the different models. But now we've got like three minutes. I'm so sorry for Q&A. Uh, Jim, please, do we have any amazing questions from our from our viewers? So that was a fantastic session. Uh, we do have lots of amazing questions. <laughs> um, we also have a couple of comments, which I do have to repeat because I very strongly agree with them. And they are, you rock, Sarah, you rock, Francesca. So thank you, I thank you very really, much. I, I know you two really well. You definitely both rock. Um, so, so there's a lot of really good questions. Uh, one of them I think is most fun is what do you think is the best application of machine learning? I mean, I think the shorter list is what is the not best application. <laughs> I mean, I, I really think it's about the question you're asking. I mean, Francesca might have a better answer here, but you know, I think that almost every aspect of my life, as you saw, I was giving examples from when I worked in food service at the zoo as a, as a you know, first year undergraduate student. I could see an application of machine learning helping there. Um, Francesca, do you have any other examples? No, I think you are totally right. I think uh, probably the, the times that where I'm uh, so uh, impressed by machine learning where it is really can uh, can help uh, humanity and uh, social challenges in general. So to make us, you know, a better person and also make this world a, a better place to live. So I would say anything that is applied to healthcare, uh, but also environmental issues, uh, it's where I'm really, really uh, happy to see machine learning and uh, applied and so application AI application that are uh, making this world a better place. And I just wanted to make my food service job easier. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you two have different priorities. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, a difficult one now. We've gone from the easy one to the hard one. Can you recommend some statistical techniques and theory that can be used to justify your data's representation along with the results you obtained in the ML model? Yes. That would probably be a question for Francesca. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yes. So there are. I, I would say that this uh, um, this part is very important when you are exploring your data. Uh, so it's not really about the machine learning models. I mean, it's still it's still picking the right machine learning model and uh, uh, reaching a good accuracy is still important. Uh, but it's more about the data exploration and most importantly how you collect the data. So I would say that there are many different statistics. Um, technical statistics that you can use, um, statistical techniques, sorry, <laughs> that you can use uh, to see if uh, your data set is representative enough of the population that you are uh, targeting. Um, and again, it's all about how you collect the data and what is the final question that you want to answer. So if, uh, again, see if the, the, the final question and the final application that you're putting together is actually targeting a specific group of uh, people or a specific scenario, I would say make sure that the data set that you are using is again is a representative enough of that uh, type of population. Yeah, and you know what? We've got, I know we've got a ton of other questions. We have a GitHub repo, aka.ms slash students at build. We will add some more explanation to that GitHub repo. We'll try to answer even more of your questions. So please head over there. And there's a survey. There's going to be a link. Please, please, please fill out the survey. We want to make sure all of the content that we're building for build, building for build, for you is the content you want to see. But I'm really excited because I brought a special guest and I'm really excited. Um, 
Everyone, Thank I want to introduce you to our host of Student Zone, Crazy Aunt Lindsay. Hi, hey guys. It's so good to be back with all of my student zoners. That was so awesome. I'm officially obsessed with Azure. I learned so much in that last uh, half an hour. I don't know about you, so hello to all the student zoners. Thank you so much for sticking with us. We are just about at our final 12 hour countdown to the end of our 48 hour journey together here at Microsoft Build Conference in the student zone, of course. If you want to learn more about machine learning, uh, the challenge, please make sure you head over to our GitHub repo, aka .ms slash students at build. Now, whenever you see me, you know what time it is. So push your chair out if you are yes. able. I want you to stand up and I want you to shake it out. I just want you to shake it out. I want you to get moving. I want you to move your head. I want you to move your body. If you know how to do the Millie Rock, do the Millie Rock. Do a little bit of the wave, the robot. I don't care what you do. I just want you to get moving. And while you're up, head over, grab yourself a glass of agua. So we're staying nice and hydrated and a snack if you haven't eaten yet. This is your reminder to do that because over the next three hours, we have some awesome activities and opportunities set up for you. One of them being a social session, which I'm so stoked about. I will be there hanging out doing some trivia. We've got some performances and a whole bunch more stuff, followed by a rebroadcast of some of the awesome keynotes on the future of tech with AI and machine learning, as well as Power Platform. And then in three hours, meet me right back here in the student zone where we will have a panel with current Microsoft employees who are doing some super cool things across the entire Microsoft business. You are not going to want to miss that. And then we've got a session on how polar bears are helping to predict climate change uh, and even a virtual reality game built in JavaScript. What? And so much more. So stick with me, catch me in a couple hours, and I will see you there. See you all later. Thank you. Bye.